My presentation is on the impact of uh, remittance from migrants, particularly with uh, internal migration on household food security in Ethiopia, focusing on uh, Tigray regional state. As you know, uh, remittance is becoming increasing in developing countries, especially in the recent years. As a result of that, for example, uh, the amount of uh, remittances from migrants is surpassing the foreign direct investment of many uh, developing countries nowadays. Uh, in the same with this, Ethiopia is also one of uh, the countries that receives uh, more remittances, according to the World Bank. Uh, the amount of uh, remittance that comes to Ethiopia is close to 387 million. And not surprisingly, uh, this potential impact of remittance is attracting uh, a lot of uh, policymakers, the academia, and so on. Given this reality, uh, this research on migrants from remittance or remittance from migrants has been done uh, for many years. But most of the research that has been done so far focuses on the impact of remittances on household poverty using annualized income and expenditure. And many researchers, including the previous two presenters, were uh, trying to investigate the impact of remittance on health issues and uh, human capital development. So uh, the focus so far thus was on the expenditure and income approach of the remittance. And most researchers do not give uh, much focal attention on the temporary issue or the temporary contribution of remittances, particularly with uh, food security, given this food security is also a multidimensional. And other researchers also focus on the determinants of migration or on the determinants of remittance so far. So little impact has been, or little research has been done on the impact of this uh, remittance on food security, particularly in the sub-Saharan African countries, including Ethiopia. So given this uh, background, the research question that I would like to highlight is, does remittance reduce household food insecurity? And again, to what extent does remittance contribute to household food security? This is the main research question that uh, this research focuses on. So in order to conduct this research, we have to depend on the data set, which is as part of uh, a data set, which is a, a collaborative research among McAllen University, where uh, I work, and the University of Taft in the US. So we had a four-round panel data. Uh, that's conducted in the uh, two livelihood zones of Tigray. And the panel, uh, purpose of the panel was to see the livelihood change over time before and after shock, or before harvest and after harvest. And the objective of the panel survey is household, household resilience in the face of shock or in the face of hunger season. And the research is also, like I said, funded by SIDA. So, in order to address or to see the impact of this uh, migration on household food security, we use the dummy variable one. This is the treatment variable, whether a household has a migrant and receives remittance or not. And we try to, to, to have different food security indicators. Like I said, unlike the previous researchers who were focusing on annual income and annual expenditure, we try to see the impact of this remittance into different dimensions or indicators of food security or the outcome variables. One of the outcome variables that we use for our investigation is the coping strategy index, which is defined as behaviors exercise in order to cope with a food deficit. And the measure, it measures the frequency and severity of coping strategies. So the higher the index, the more food insecurity households. And we also try to see the reduced coping strategy index. This is also similar uh, to the previous one. And these food security indicators or the outcome variables are based on the food security indicator of FAO, the World Health Organization. And we have also another dimension or indicator of food security that we use. This is the household food insecurity and access scale. 
This is also about annexity not to procure or about the access to food. And in addition to this, we also try to use this food consumption score or this dietary diversity indicator as part of uh, food security indicator. So in order to see the impact of this migration uh, to the outcome variables that we explain, we try to use this implicant strategy, for example. This Y refers to the food security status in terms of coping strategy. It could be in terms of dietary diversity or food consumption core or any other uh, indicator that we use. So using this uh, empirical strategy, for this simple approach assumes this remittance from migrant is something exogenous, while it is something voluntarily and maybe based on individual uh, household characteristics. So if we use this approach, selection bias occurs, and this difference in food security outcomes may not be due to the actual effect of treatment or the actual effect of remittance from migrants, but it may be due to simple and observed heterogeneity. So the issue here is unobservable household characteristics may influence migration. And if we are not uh, addressing this issue, we will come up with inconsistent estimates of this impact of remittance to this household for security. So for example, if only households with large numbers choose to migrate and send remittances, and we fail to control these household characteristics, there will be a bias in the estimate. So households may, be, may have higher food security regardless of their migration status. So in order to address this, ideally we have to compare to the control group and the treatment group. So here the control group is food security outcome for households that did not receive remittance from migrants vis-a-vis -vis these food security outcomes for households that received remittance. So to address this, we use, we employ this propensity score matching technique in assessing the difference in food security outcomes among these two groups, where this propensity score is defined as the conditional probability of receiving remittance given this pre-participation characteristics. So this is uh, the outcome variable from the descriptive statistics among these uh, households with migrant or households receiving remittance vis-a-vis -vis households without. So in terms of this, we find that these households with remittance have higher, lower this coping strategy index and lower this household food insecurity access as compared households without remittance. However, this kind of mean comparison may not reflect the true impact of this uh, remittance from migrants because it may confound different factors. So in order to use, we have to check all the uh, criteria that support using this propensity score matching. One is this distribution of propensity scores. And this is, uh, we try to see how the covariance before and after matching are balanced. In addition to this, we tried also to see the covariant balance before and after matching so that we can, we can employ this propensity score matching. And in addition, we tried also to check the R square and the likelihood ratio before and after uh, matching so that we can, this method is something. So the result indicates or the average treatment effect shows that this uh, remittance from households lowers the coping strategy index and the reduced coping strategy index in addition to the household food insecurity access to scale. This implies that migration or internal migration enhances the food security status of households in terms of reducing coping strategy index and in terms of reducing this household food insecurity access scale. However, we didn't see any uh, difference among these households with migrants and that without migrants in terms of food consumption score or in terms of uh, dietary diversity. So to conclude my presentation, we found that remittance lower frequency and severity of coping strategy of households in Ethiopia in terms of lowering this uh, coping strategy. And then remittance also improved food access by lowering this uh, household food insecurity access to scale. 
So the recommendation that we forward is strengthening local institutions to increase their participation in remittance market or expand funding sources and client base. And again, it's imperative to include migration and remittance as important component of food security programs in developing countries, including Ethiopia. And again, it's also high time for governments to seriously consider the need of providing incentives to promote the flows of transfer among families. It could be in terms of developing microfinances so that migrants to urban areas could send many their family back home. Thank you very much.